the formidable robot. This is an archived blog post from 2016 of someone that had gone missing soon after making it. His account was mysteriously deleted a week after they made the blog, and they haven't been seen since. This is his final blog, unedited. I'm pretty sure at least a few of you know about the Nicktoons Summer Splash event that took place from 2000 to 2001 on Nickelodeon. However, there has been something bothering me since I was a kid. A hijack had taken place around July of 2001, and I haven't seen many people talking about it online. I've asked my friends about it recently, and only a few of them said they knew what I was talking about. If I had to take a guess, the hijack had probably only been broadcasted in certain areas. I decided to call my father about it, as he was with me when the hijack happened. He was surprised I had remembered what happened, as I was about 6 when it happened. He said that he had recorded the entire event, and that the tape was in the attic of our old house. The only problem, was that my mother was still living there. The reason why it's a problem, was that my parents had gotten divorced when I was 9, and I had to live with my dad, while my sister stayed with my mom. I won't go into it too much as it isn't important to this. My father wasn't willing to do the 30 minute drive there, so I had my friend Eric drive me there. To make a long story short, we got there, got the tape and left. But since nothing can ever be easy, the tape didn't even work. My only option left was to have my sister put the tape through a tape to DVD burner, or whatever it's called. After an hour, I got the disc, and was finally able to watch it. As I put the DVD in the DVD player, a feeling of dread and excitement went over me. Dread because I was a little nervous of what the disc held, and excited because I was able to experience it again. The disc started no problem as it showed a summer splash bumper. The bumper was of Spongebob and Patrick sitting on Spongebob's couch. It was normal until a few seconds in when they both stopped talking. Spongebob's pupils had shrunken, and Patrick's eyes turned purple, like his eyelids. Spongebob's mouth moved like he was talking, but all that came out was garbled noises and beeps. After a few seconds, Patrick began to become pixelated before disappearing. The screen then went completely pixelated as a droning sound played. A message quickly flashed on screen for a split second. After rewinding it, the message read. I'm sorry, but it had to be done. Unpausing the DVD, it then cut to a recording of a street at night. The date at the bottom read, May 12, 2001. The shot of the road stayed for at least a minute, with a car passing by every now and then. It then cut to a recording of a dark forest, as the person operating the camera walked through the forest not saying a word. They were holding a handheld radio playing the song Living in the Sunlight by Tiny Tim. After a while, they had reached an opening to a lake, with the reflection of the moonlight being visible on the water. I then noticed a disturbing detail, that being a blood trail leading to the lake. The guy then said in a quiet tone. She's in the water. Want to see? The man then approached the lake to reveal a woman's corpse floating in the water. The body didn't show signs of decay, so I imagined that she was killed not long before the recording. Then the multicolored lines and loud beep played, as Nick had gotten control of the network again. The Stick With Nick Technical Difficulties screen then appeared before the disc ended. It took me a minute to piece everything together of what I had just seen. My conclusion was that a serial killer had hijacked Nick for whatever reason, and showed one of his victims. I then went to the library to do more research, as I didn't have a computer at the time. It turns out, a total of 30 people ranging from age 10 to 35, had gone missing from 1999 to now, 2016. The police were only able to find one person, and that was 21-year-old Elizabeth Jones. She was found in a lake at a local forest, just like the one from the recording. When I got back home, two cop cars were parked outside my house. I asked them what was going on, and they said that they got a call from a neighbor, that someone broke my front window and had gotten inside. When we went in, nothing was stolen, except of course the DVD. I told them of what I watched, and the research I did. They said that case is still ongoing, but they're starting to lose hope to find the killer. They then asked me if I knew anyone that would try to rob me, and my only guess was the killer somehow tracked me down, 
and stolen the DVD. At the time I'm writing this, I'm on edge, as that lunatic possibly knows where I live. I'm just afraid he'll try to kill me next, but I just hope he doesn't try to.